Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna be starting a new series here on the single neck lap steel. We made a double neck lap steel in the past. This is the single neck version of that instrument. I've made a few changes. Um, I think I've improved the design. I learned a lot from that first one. We're gonna do some really interesting stuff with this one. I think it's gonna be a phenomenal instrument. Um, please check it out, please subscribe, please like. If you want access to this file and all the other files on my channel, please join my Patreon group. You can uh, get advice there for your CAD CAM work. I'll help you out with your problems when you get stuck and you'll have all of my files to download. Um, we've still got the octave mandolin build going on, but I've got a whole bunch of tiny little details to work out on making those tuning machines. It's gonna be really cool, but that's going to take a little bit of time, so we've got a little bit of a gap there. I'm still in the process of finishing the octave mandolin, so that's going to take a little while. That process is pretty drawn out the way I do it. Um, I haven't really captured that too much in video, but I'll get to that at some point here. So this is the time to kind of get started on the next project. This is a pretty simple one to build. Um, I think it's got some really cool details to it, so let's just dig into it. So here we are in the file. Um, this is what I've got so far. I think it's really interesting. Um, I added a couple of pick guards here and a custom pick guard with a nameplate on it. The typical Bigsby style decorations that you might see. Um, this is very strongly influenced by the Grady Martin double neck guitar. So let's bring up a canvas so we can look at that a little bit. So you can see we're heavily influenced by this instrument. It's a very cool thing. I really like the way Bigsby approached building custom instruments for people. So he really spent his time kind of defining an instrument that was perfect for that player. So most people here, they're very familiar with the Bigsby tremolo, um, but second to that are, are the other aluminum parts here that Bigsby was producing by hand in his shop. So you can see here these pickups, they are sand cast parts, right? So he sand cast and hand finished all of these parts. And we're not going to go that far. We're going to CNC mill them, but we're going to, I'm going to replicate these as close to as possible. So here you go. I've replicated the model still using slotted hardware, which some people hate, but it's got a really nice vintage look to it. Um, I've modeled up the bobbin and all the parts here will make that later in this series. But this video, we're going to talk about setting up stock. Okay, so the first thing to do is kind of get some of these things out of the way that we're not going to be working on till later. So let's get these the pickup out of the way. Let's also get the fretboard and these pick guards out of the way. And this is the core of the instrument. This is the stock that we have to set up. Now Bigsby wasn't really known for building in mahogany, but he did tend to use contrasting tone woods to really make those lines and curves really stand out. And I also love that style. So what I've done here is make most of this out of mahogany and then this top piece I'm gonna make out of flame maple. We're gonna book match that, it's gonna look really awesome. So really, we've got a couple of pieces of stock to set up. Almost all of this, except this little headpiece, are all gonna get glued up into one big block, rough cut on the bandsaw, and then milled. It's really kind of a simple milling job in that it's really a body and neck like all smashed together in one piece and we just mill it all together. So that makes the production of this pretty simple, but we're gonna try to make it kind of unique as well. So my process is kind of to try to build a model that I want to build to and then create a drawing that I can take out to the shop, start cutting up my stock and selecting my pieces. I can do my rough stock work out in the shop to that drawing, um, glue those pieces up and then finish them out to the thicknesses that I need. And then in some cases, I like to bring that stock piece right back into fusion. Um, in this one, we're not actually gonna have to do that because I've got another workaround, but we'll get to that in just a sec. So here's my drawing. Um, this is just like a simple drawing of those parts that we need to we need to stock out, right? So I've got my lengths and my widths. Um, you can see that this thick veneer is a quarter inch thick, and then the main piece of mahogany is at one and a half inches by almost 30 inches by just a little bit over nine inches. So we're gonna stock out those pieces, and then um, we're gonna get set up to glue them up. There's a couple of challenges in this piece in that you can see the flame maple top piece and the mahogany piece have a nice crisp joint between them. So um, I'm probably gonna have to set up some cuts to do a clean cut on the CNC machine that we can, because 
you know, you don't see table saw on this channel ever. I don't even own one. <laughs> so that would be a great cut to cut on a table saw if you had one. I don't really have one, so we're gonna cut that on the CNC machine, and then we'll glue all three of these pieces up into one big blank. We'll thickness sand them out to our callout dimension here, which is one and three quarter inches. And then what I like to do is I like to create a template that I use for a couple of reasons. So let's look at the template here. So this is my template design. I like to cut out one of these templates and engrave the lines in it and I can lay out my hardware on top of it to make sure that everything's gonna fit the way I want it to fit. I can see the feel and the size of the instrument a little bit this way, kind of bring it into the real world where I can start thinking about how things fit and how things feel. Um, and then the secondary use of this is once I have that big stock piece of material all glued up, what I like to do is roughly bandsaw cut around it. And I can use this template to create that outline that I cut out roughly on the bandsaw with. Then I can attach that roughed out material to the CNC and finish the CNC milling. And I also need that shape here in Fusion 360 so that I can use it to create my cam. So let's see what that looks like. So here's my stock material. Let's get rid of those sketches. So here's my stock material. I like to create this stock material and then convert its appearance to air. So you get this wire box around your bodies. So this is what it looks like. We're gonna try to cut this out and we're gonna cut it out from this piece of stock here. We're not gonna need that when we go over here to the manufacturing workspace because I've already set it up as a stock, but let's show you how I did that. So first operation is the back. You can see I have my setup stock as that outline material that we'll roughly have. And then I've got my body inside here as what we're actually cutting out. All we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a profile. I'm doing something a little bit different here. Maybe I'll talk about that a little bit after. So here we are on our profile cut. Very simple. I mean, this is a very simple set of machining operations. You've seen me do this many times. We're just gonna cut the profile first, then we'll start cutting out the pockets. I'm gonna cut this cavity cover pocket first, and then I'm gonna cut the cavity itself. Then I have an adaptive tool path here that I'll use to cut out the extra material behind the headstock, and then a scallop to finish it up. And then finally, a little pocket to cut this cut out here. This is just kind of a little feature that I'm trying out to use for my clip-on tuner so that my tuner is attached in a place that I can see it while I'm playing all the time. That's the idea. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see if it works. Um, if it's a big fail, I've got this little hole in the back of there, but it is what it is. So that's what we're going to try. Um, then we move on to the top. You can see I don't have my setup stock set up um, the same here, but that's because there are no profile cuts, so it doesn't really matter on this top cut because it's simply a boring operation for the bridge, um, drilling operation for the controls, and the pocket for the pickup. And that's really it as far as milling. So this is a very clean, crisp job. Um, there's gonna be some more details when we get into the pick guards, but we'll get into that later in later videos. Let's go look at the stock we got set up and see what we're gonna do to get those parts glued together, roughed out, and on the machine. 